I hope this finds you well. It's a, it's a cold Tuesday morning here, minus five. I am coming to you from Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom, if you are new here. Um, I hope this finds you well. I have myself a decaf flat white, and it's actually come out pretty beautifully today. Um, something about the weather changing has made the, the way we had the coffee dialed in before really good. It was pulling quite fast previously and the shot lasted bang on today and the milk steamed beautifully and that makes me very happy. I feel excited to have a nice coffee. I don't think I had one this weekend um, or yesterday. I, it was a tea weekend. We did have a hot chocolate yesterday which was a treat. But anyway, enough of that chatter. I do hope to bring Alex on next normal podcast because I realised that the next one will be a hundred, which is wild, which is like a hundred hours or a hundred half an hours, a mix of those of me talking about knitting, which kind of leads me to believe that I've done really a serious amount of hours of knitting now. Um, things are starting to slow down. I'm starting to knit um, at a little bit of a slower pace. And I think that's because we don't need to talk about that now. We're here to talk about what I have been knitting on. Um, but I do think I will do a bit more of a reflection in the new year on moving forward again. I know I talk about it a lot, but I, I think it's good to consider where you've been here as the, in the present and then where you hope to go in the future without, you know, worrying too much about the past or stressing about the future, just being here but considering it and planning the intended way you hope to move on. Wow, that got, yeah. Oh, that was good. Um, yeah, I think, I think I've really, I've been talking about this with a couple of my, uh, closer knitting friends this week but I, I do think I found my kind of flow or my comfort zone and where I really want to be with what I'm knitting personally which will hopefully on a bigger more fun picture scale if you will guide me as I move forward with that too and that and that, yeah it makes me happy and I know it's very different from where I was four years ago but that's because I am very different from four years ago. <laughs> yeah! Anyway, today I am wearing my Look at My Holes by James N. Watts, one of my favourite pieces in my wardrobe. This one was knitted using either Holst Super Soft or... What are you doing, little Mai? Is you being a naughty little tinker? We'll see. Say hi to your friends. Yeah. She's the real reason that anyone's here, aren't you? That is little Audrey in House Familiar. Absolute sweetheart. But not one to join us very much anymore. And I and, and I'm oh we might be blessed with a sofa sit. Go on. Go on. No. She's just sitting on the floor. Um Yes, this one is knitted using Holst Super Soft and I believe I held it double. I really want to knit more of these. I don't need another. I've, I knitted a green one in the summer. I knitted a silk one in black over the summer and a sort of teal one. Um, it's just great. It's good for layering. It's good in the summer. Maybe not in this wool. I wouldn't recommend this for most people next to skin in the summer it might be a little bit too prickly um but yeah if you're not into this sort of meshy aesthetic daily it's it's a really good thermal piece if you knitted it with long sleeve it's it's great i've got the uh, pure mesh pullover which is a long sleeve pattern And that I've been wearing under all my layers since we've had minus five weather here. And it is actually 
still a little bit snowy outside. Um, yeah, they're, so they're really good for layering, especially if you were to use something that your body loves and provides you warmth. Um, I th feel like we're all different. Um, yes, yeah, so I love this. And this is the Vapu cardigan that I keep saying that I'm not going to wear <laughs> uh, too much, but I love it. It's knitted using... Um, oh, goodness. This one's 100% woolly... 100% British wool woolly knit in black. I'm sure that's the case. Or is it Drops Alpaca? Do you know what? I keep wearing things that I've knitted quite a long time ago in black yarns and it's really hard to remember. But this has definitely got Drops um, Kid Silk Alpaca base in it and something else. It might be Drops Nord. Either way, I love it, I wear it a lot. It is just a drop shoulder jumper that I've converted into a cardigan. Um, I just picked up stitches for the shoulders, then increased down and then knitted back and forth. And then attached the body after where the shoulder, the sleeve would be and then knitted fully back and forth and then knit the sleeves in the round. Um, it's a really great, cardigan for me. I don't really do cardigans with buttons done up because if I'm gonna wear something with the button done up I will just wear a jumper. That's just me. Um, I'm also wearing my gorgeous mustard socks that I knitted using um, a mohair and fin blend. Uh, I can't, I mean I can, I can do this. <laughs> um, I love these socks. They are some of my favourite socks that I've ever knitted. I've been wearing them loads already. Um, they look great with my docks. And they're just very cute. They're cute but warm, which makes them very practical for me. Um, and I love the colour. Anyway. <laughs> I can't decide if I really need this coffee or it's going to be a bad idea and I'm going to be even more silly. I still think my silly it's pretty... I can be really really silly and that's usually saved for <laughs> my tightest inner circle and otherwise I feel like everyone just thinks I'm a bit miserable but I'm not. I'm not. Um, anyway, new knitting. I will talk about it very briefly because I don't actually have it. I took a couple of photos, but I knitted a hat in this yarn, which is 100% British wool by Woolly Knit. Comes on the cone, and this is the colour Harvest. I got the yarn right. And I knitted it for a, a lovely friend, Alex's... The singer in Alex's band is called Alex, which gets kind of confusing. Um, but he actually, when we were out, requested a hat and not not everyone that oh, that requests a hat or requests something would appreciate it in the same way and I knew that he really really would and it just so happened that on Saturday no Friday Alex went and met him after he'd finished work and he said that the morning of and I was like I've got probably an hour's left of knitting on this. Can I do this before you... Oh. Let's put this on mute. Ah, Husband. Um, I love you, Alex. Uh, yeah, so Alex was going into work late. I knew that I had an hour. I basically put on uh, some campaign one of Critical Role and just sat and knitted and I managed to get the thing done which really was good because otherwise he wouldn't have had it until he got back from Italy which might have been well it would have been after Christmas so I thought it was quite good that we managed to get it done and just for reference it's basically the same as this hat that I knitted for myself in the last few weeks um, this one is using Hobby Evergreen um, which is a fingering weight base that I've been able to knit using a 3.75mm needle and it the, the fabric be beautiful and I'm not 
sure if that's because my knitting has got a lot more tight and con and, and a lot more consistent or what but I also held um drops mohair with it and I basically knitted exactly the same hat but I knitted it a little bit longer and with four extra stitches um so it's a one by one rib hat cast on the stitches that I needed knit a tube until I felt like it was ready for decreasing and then divided it into four sections again this time for the other version and then just did one decrease round one normal round until I was kind of happy that it was going to be long enough and then I did just decrease rounds until I got to the top and then wove the yarn through and job's good and But it was a really, these are really fun projects for me because they're simple and I can do them kind of without thinking. And like I said last week, it's a little bit more stimulating, not just knitting stockinette. I know it's not much different knitting ribbing, but it seems to hold my attention a little bit more than just stockinette has done lately. <laughs> oh, this is so good. I also finished the project that I wasn't sure if I was going to keep or if I wasn't going to give it away and having tried it on before blocking it and then giving it a wash and not really blocking it actually, I just washed it and just let it dry. I put it on and showed Alex and he's like it fits you perfectly and I think I'll keep it but what I'm going to do is when I do my jump around up in the next couple of weeks so I'm hoping to record it next week and then save it for the new year so that I've got a good amount of time to edit it and maybe get some extra shots and wear things and maybe come back to them if I haven't worn them um, yeah I think I'll pass on a few more jumpers I know that what I wear has dramatically changed over the last year two years back to what I would wear years ago, uh, five years ago, six years ago. Um, for those of you who are new here, I have had a, a journey and being unwell made a difference, doing yoga training made a difference, living just made a difference and I know I've talked about it a lot but when I met Alex I was well into my vintage rockabilly psychobilly era and that kind of faded out um lots of reasons and maybe i'll come back and talk about that but yes so all that to say i might over dye some things over christmas over the holiday season because i know that i, I am drawn to darker things it makes me happy it makes me feel like me um so i think this is going to go in my wardrobe and here it is <laughs> So this is my dream sweater by um, Claudia Q, who is the owner of Unit Toronto, which is a beautiful yarn shop that has a really wonderful collection of yarns and secretly very much hoping that I can get over to Canada at some point. Not very secretly. I've actually, when I grew up, my dream was to do six months and then six, uh, six weeks and then six months in Iceland. And the same in Canada. Neither's happened. That's life. But one day I will get to Canada and I'm going to go ice skating outside. Which has come up loads in conversation lately. But if you don't know, I love ice skating. I'm not nearly as good at it as I used to be. But I love to ice skate. It makes me grin from ear to ear. Um, yes. And I love this jumper, and I would love to go to the shop where this yarn was very kindly sent from. Um, so the yarn that I used is Kelvin Woolen Scout, and the best way to describe it is like <laughs> Audrey, not the plant. <laughs> um, it's like a well-loved jersey jumper, or a yeah. Um, I don't think. I don't think it's got any prickliness to it. It might for some people, and I always have to say this out loud because we are all different and we all have to make our own decisions. 
but I think as far as a 100% wool goes, this is really soft. It's it's bouncy and yeah, it's just gorgeous. Um, I wouldn't have been able to afford to knit this without the very generous um, people at Unit Toronto. So I'm very grateful to have tried it. And this colour is Charcoal Heather. <laughs> and this one is uh, Grey Heather. And it just so happens that this Charcoal Heather goes really well with my Unarmoured Defence Cow, which I've got here. Um, which I actually shrunk. Um, but it means that I can wear this underneath here and then suddenly I've got a cow neck, which I tell you what has been amazing the last few days. I haven't actually worn a coat. I've worn my Eastwind jacket with this and this and my storm hood. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. I do want to knit myself some more mittens, but other than that, I'm pretty good. And also I really want to knit some tights anyway, or at least knee high socks. This one. So I, I enjoyed the process and I think the simple texture repeat made a big difference to me. It was very simple uh, to do, uh, but that held my attention. I was fairly consistently counting to eight in my head, just keeping because that's how many knitting rows there were. Um, I was just keeping that in my head, so there was always something tiny to focus on. Um, and otherwise, I knitted it to pattern. So it's a bottom-up jumper. You're meant to start with the sleeves and then knit the body. I cast on the body. Because I was not sure if I was going to give it away or keep it, um, and, was, and, and, and I did knit the yoke and then do the sleeves top down so that I could decide how I wanted to knit them depending on who it was for. I had never finished a the body of a jumper and then picked up stitches for the yoke in the way that I did. So all I did was I did a backwards loop cast on for the amount of sleeve stitches I needed and then continued with the yoke and then picked them back up um, and knitted down in the round. I omitted the decreases because that's just how I really like sleeves. I didn't realise that, but I do. And I either like fairly loose the ends of the jumpers and it to be a little bit shorter or long enough that I can fold it and it look nice. Or I like to use a really speedy decrease to provide a, an almost bell sleeve no, um, and a nice close rib. Um, the only other thing that I did, because I don't consider those to really be modifications, they were just different ways of constructing exactly the same thing, was adding ladder back jacquard to the this section of colour work. It absolutely wasn't needed on the rest. And I've explained this so many times before, but just in case, it basically means that you add a one extra stitch somewhere or multiple times throughout a chart repeat, which enables you to have these longer floats and stretchy fabric at the back of your work so there's no pulling. And it's it's almost invisible. Oh yeah, it's got short rows, which is nice. And I have to say, this is now the second yoke jumper that I've knitted that fits me really well. And I'm really happy because I did say the Arachne was kind of my last go at a yoke because I've knitted so many that initially I loved and then over time I've realised they're not quite the right shape for me. Um, but this one is, uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether the way that both Sandy who does did the Arachne jumper
and Claudia, who designed this, did different rates of decreases and increases, um, which just works for me. But I'm really, really happy with the, the shaping on this, which, yeah. Um, and I will put in some footage now. Maybe I've done it already. Editing me sometimes jumps the gun um, of me wearing it because I do think putting it on shows it a lot better. And for reference, I knitted the smallest size and I don't often say it out loud, but I am about four foot, no, five foot four. I was going to say four foot five. No, I'm nearly a foot taller than that. I'm five foot four and fairly small. Like I'm just a rectangle. I think I've got five inch difference between my chest and my waist. And then my hips go out a little bit bigger. I can't remember that one, but yeah. It was so lovely that day, um, that was Sunday. Uh, the day before, which I'll put some footage of both up, uh, it was really bright and sunny. And then on that day it was like all hazy and warm, slightly warmer for it, but it was lovely. Um, the third and final finished object is the thing that I've knitted to replace the the jumper for the potential recipient and I finished it already which makes me really happy because I have a clanger to knit which I probably won't get finished before Christmas but that's fine I see the little one who it's for so frequently that they'll have it and probably be excited to not get it at the same time as everything else and hopefully play with it because knitting things <laughs> takes time uh, but I used some hand spun. That was Audrey coming in and Audrey's bit of chicken finishing cooking. She, it's like she knew, she's just come running down the stairs. Did you know your chicken's ready? Oh no, not there. <laughs> Don't move the... Don't move the camera. You don't want everyone to go dizzy. So I used some hand spun and this was some uh, Gotland and it is, I mean, the fibre is beautiful and I don't think I did a very bad job of spinning it. I should have filmed the whole thing, um, but I think I've shared it in the past, uh, but here it is. Um, it's one of my bouncier yarns that I've spun, which is nice and has really benefited, like benefited this project for it. It was a two ply and I believe it was the first natural wool that I spun on my spinning wheel. And if not, I did it on a drop spindle, which seems wild looking at it. Um, and from memory there was 320 meters for 120 grams so yeah i should really check check the wraps per inch but i just got overexcited and cast on um but here it is i did a hot water bottle cover the same as my my one but different so this one it was in the hearth dk by woolly mammoth in the color seaweed and this one is my hand spun. Um, that needs a little bit of pulling up. But I haven't washed this, so I'm going to do that before I gift it. Um, but I thought it was easier to show you, essentially, on a hot water bottle cover blocker. Uh, but yeah, this is something that I have written up. It has just been into tech editing. I've got to read through it. I haven't seen any of the notes yet. 
it's what I'm doing before editing today, which is exciting. And it's already been knitted by amazing Inga from the Knitting Traditions who knitted it up in like three days or something, a bit like I did with this one. Uh, so yeah, a couple of other knitters are having a little knit of it and it will be out in the, in the wild. Uh, but I love it and it's a fun one to knit because it, the, I think the cables are very intuitive. Once you've done one repeat, you're kind of like, oh, I got this. And because it is, you know, not much different than the circumference of a hat, it goes really quickly. So they're really good for gifts. And personally, I think they're great as a gift because I used mine in the summer. I don't know if you, we had a very hot summer here and I put cold water in them for not just myself, but for Audrey too, too. And she was just sitting on them to keep nice and cool. So I think they're a year round item and you know it's like giving someone a woolly hug honey you can't do that yes she can because she rules the roost don't you but it really is a big woolly hug in gansey world because it seems like <laughs> The never ending guarantee. Um, Ulysses Yarn by Dorero Natura, Bailey and Blur, if I remember correctly. I should at this point. Uh, this is the Ardmore Gansey, if you're not familiar with it. <laughs> if you've been here before, I'm sorry you're seeing this unfinished again. <laughs> I ripped out the sleeve and I am now this far along again. Uh, Alex tried it on and he was quite happy with it, but both my gut instinct and just m wanting to do this as good as I possibly can, I sat there and ripped it out straight away. Um, I've cast on the one size smaller sleeve rather than changing anything else and it seems to be a lot better just for him. Um, bearing in mind I've gone up a full needle size that is correct yeah um over what's recommended and while i knit a bit tighter i think i knit a very similarly to kate davies from past experience so i've essentially just knitted a size a bit the, the size that i've chosen a bit larger so i think i've had to go down for the sleeve which is totally fine and it is knitting up fairly quickly, so hopefully now that I've got the hot water bottle cover finished, I've finished my knit along, which was really nice to be a part of. I've done the hat that needed to get given away. I can work on this a little bit more uh, monogamously and hopefully get it done in time for Christmas. It really isn't the end of the world if I don't, but I have been saying this, I would really like to not get everything gone. But I'd like to clear my needles because I have a few projects that I would love to work on. Um, I know that I've got a couple of samples coming up, but I'd really like to come back to my Mighty Nine Sock series. Really fun. I've got a few other ideas for just personal projects that I would love to knit for me. And I've got a plethora of socks that I would love to knit to. Um, there's the It's Thursday Night Socks by Sock Witchery. I have um, Funny Pair by Kelsey of Knitting the Carby. There's just like quite a few socks that I would love to try and maybe it's because I am, I'm a bit, I don't know. I just, every time I pick up a pair of socks, I end up wanting to either knit Mighty Nine Socks or just vanilla -y simple three by one ribbing or vanilla socks. So I think I'd like to dabble a bit more this year or next year into more interesting socks. Um, you've just been outside, Audrey. Um, and while we're on 
socks. I am finally plying up my No Nylon Sock Yarn from Crux Fibers. The lovely Brittany sent me a, a, a bat that she had blended for me. Um, it was called... I want to say The Sky at Night, but it wasn't. It had a beautiful name, and I do apologise, but I don't have anything with me because it's all over by my spinning wheel and I daren't touch it because I've put it away with the bobbin kind of hanging off. Um, but it's a gorgeous yarn. It's got loads of my favourite fibres in it from Mohair to Icelandic to Jacob. Um, and I'm finally plying it. I'm doing a chain ply method to get a three ply. I only have three bobbins and I say that like, oh, but I don't mean it like that. Just I have three bobbins, which means I can either do a two ply or a, or a single ply, really. Um, and this means I get a three ply, which is something that I'd really like for the socks. I want them to last and it's looking like it's coming out about right for socks, um, for a fingering weight proper sock yarn. Um, so I'll put in a little bit of new sap doing that and then you get to see what it's looking like. And that is an outfit. So that is how I dressed to go and pick up Audrey some chicken this morning. Which essentially was my pyjamas with a dress over the top. And I had my knee high boots so you couldn't tell that I was still wearing my thermally pyjama bottoms on. <laughs> Adulting. Why not? I wasn't going to let go of that body heat when <laughs> it's minus three outside today. Yeah, and I, th I think that's kind of all I have to share. I know that this week we've got some nice things on, which is exciting. And then it's the holiday season, which we're still not prepared for um, without oversharing too much. There's been a little bit of health in our in our home that's needed looking looking out for and kind of managing. So we have had a couple of slow weekends. Um, which might mean that our holiday season is a little bit more jam-packed than we wanted to. Um, but it'll all be lovely. So, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to leave you with some, hopefully, some nice winter wonderlandy footage. And wish you well. I might quickly record, not today, but just as a, a bonus -y thing. Because I'm interested in it. But I might record a video on maybe my top 10 and a few other bits, uh, albums of the year. I think I've said this loads about music without going too waffly, but where when we were younger and even when we were younger or I was younger, there was still access to a, a wealth of music, like a huge amount of music. But now you've got anything and everything at your fingertips, like instantly where we've changed 
and where you know you'd have an album that you love and you'd pass it around every one of your friends on a CD or you know send it to each other um and really swap and talk about music and people in your group were kind of on the similar wavelength and always you know you had the core albums say of what your friends listened to and each person had a few extra like had their own offshoots but you'd still be able to share and talk about it it's too overwhelming who's unless it's like tall have released their first album in x amount of years or metallica has just released a new song not many people are in my circle are talking about it and i want to hear about what people are listening to so i'm hoping that that might be a way of instigating that around here at least but if you do have any albums that you recommend i'm all i'm all ears um but yeah i think i'll do that because it won't take too long and it'll be nice for me to sit down and reflect on music and hopefully listen to some music but yeah thank you so much for sitting down with me i hope that whether you're celebrating anything over the next few weeks or not i hope you have a wonderful time if you no matter what you're doing i hope you get to see some loved ones and give lots of squishy hugs to people i hope that you do make sure you take some time for yourself if you are setting intentions i hope you do so with kind of grace and kindness to yourself and uh yeah i'm sending lots of lots of woolly hugs from our home to yours and i hope to see you again very soon Summer, winter.